The way you design your components informs the entire architecture of your Angular application. Hi, my name is Stephen Fluin, and today on Demos with Angular, we're digging in deep into the idea of smart and dumb components. Otherwise, you might also hear them called presentational components. We're going to take a look at the differences between a smart and a dumb component, and why you might want to use this pattern in your application. Let's dive in. To kick us off in understanding the difference between a smart and a dumb component, I have engineered a new project called Smart v Dumb Components. And this is just a blank Angular CLI application. And we can see if we jump in, it has all of the normal things that one might expect. So you're going to have an app component, app module, all the normal things. And um, we've got an ng serving over here in mobile view, because that's how most users access the internet. And we can just check that everything's working here by deleting that content. All right, so we are all set to start building our smart components and our dumb components. So I'm first going to build a dumb component uh, because really all components start as dumb components. Uh, what it means by dumb component is really just that a component does not have a lot of state that is long lived. It doesn't have access to services. It doesn't store data in a backend, all those sorts of uh, things that really keep the focus of the component on presentation. All right, so I'm going to start off by using ng-generate to generate a component called repo list. And so this is going to give me all of the default things that I ex expect as part of a new component. And then what we could do is, if we look at the template here, this is a dumb component. Uh, if you combine this with the component, this component is really isolated. And so the benefits of being a dumb component is that this component can be moved around, right? So we can define inputs and outputs um, on this component. So for example, if I wanted to say input, uh, maybe there's an input called uh, endpoint. Maybe there's an output called um, update. I, I'm, I'm just kind of making these things up as I go. So even if this has an input and an output, it's still a dumb component because it is not intelligent enough to try and manage state itself. It doesn't have to listen for changes. It just uses the native machinery of Angular in order to wire those things up. So if we imagine for a moment, uh, instead of an endpoint here, let's call this a repo list. And this is just going to take a list of repositories. And now I can actually go ahead and use this dumb component by creating a smart component. Um, and so what we'll do here is, in addition to our repo list, let's make a ng-generate component. Maybe we'll just call this uh, view repos. Now, view repos is going to be a smart component, and we're going to follow a very traditional pattern of wrapping a dumb component in a smart component. And so if we dive into our view repos component, this is where we're going to want to do things like fetch data from the internet. And then at the end of the day, what we want to see is that instead of rendering this out directly, we're going to use our dumb component. So I'm going to say app repo list, and I will say list equals, we'll just give it a list that we'll create in a moment here. So now my mission is to create a local property on the view repos component and then have that piped into the dumb component that really just knows about presentation. Uh, and I know that this is going to come in as an observable, so I'm going to make this async. So let's go ahead and just jump in here and use my favorite uh, easy way to make components a little bit more lifelike, uh, which is to use HTTP client module from at angular slash common slash HTTP. And we will just import this module. And now from our smart component, we can make an HTTP request. So it's in our smart component where we're going to be managing the state. We're going to be understanding, hey, how do we fetch out to the internet? How do we manage our use of resources across the web? And so we're going to say list is an observable of any arrays. And then what we can do in our constructor is I can inject HTTP client and make sure we inject the right one. And now I can say const path equals the path of the URL that I'm trying to hit. So we now have a GitHub URL that we can hit. And we can say this.list equals hp.get. And this is going to give us back a items an object that we know looks a little bit like that, and then we can just pass it the path. 
So this is a tightness match, and that's because we need to go ahead and unwrap some of the data. So we're gonna take we're gonna, this, we're gonna pipe it through, and then we're gonna map the data into data.items. And then we'll have to just import map from ArcGIS. All right, so very quickly here now, we've built a smart component that knows how to fetch data from the internet. It has a uh, list member that is an observable of arrays. And then we use its template in order to render that out to a app repo list, which is just a dumb component. And the, the nice thing here is that the dumb component is reusable and it's portable, right? So anything that we put in the dumb component should be visible throughout the entire application. Uh, and ah. And we had a slight typo here with the name of the input that we were expecting in our uh, component. So if we just tweak this file a little bit, that should be correct. So what we're doing is the smart component is actually figuring out what is the list data, how do we fetch that from the internet, and it's managing the subscription and the lifecycle. And then the app repo list can actually be a very dumb component. And one of the, the benefits of that is that we can actually improve the change detection of our application. So we can say, uh, change detection strategy is going to be on push because the we know that because there's no state and then because we know that there's no um, management of data that exists in the dumb component the only thing that can require this component to re-render is if the list input changes or emits a new value and so we're actually kind of handling everything automatically here uh, and now let's actually go ahead and show some of our data here. So in our repo list, in our dumb component, we know we have this list. We could actually look at its JSON if we were curious to do so. We should see this right here. And if we wire up our app repo list, or our app view repos, excuse me, we should see this all start to render in. And if we just take a moment here to finish up our dumb components HTML, instead of saying list.json, we could say something like list.name, give this an h1, maybe a paragraph tag of uh, list.description, and then wrap this in a div g4 equals let repo of list. Now we don't have to do any of the unwrapping because that's already been done by the smart outer component. And then each of these just becomes repo. And this should all render properly. Yep, there we go. So now we have a dumb component that's handling the rendering of this list. We could break this down into further dumb components. You can imagine if we generated something like ng-generate component repository view. This could be another dumb component that then we nest inside of this. So imagine if instead of a div here, we actually made this a app repository view. And the magic here is though that even though we're using another dumb component, I, I can tell and I can trust that these things are all gonna work in isolation. They're not managing any sort of data. And so I can use them safely across my application to get consistent experience. So we're just gonna need to make a repository input on our component. And then what we can do is we can basically just say repository equals repo and then move over the code. And we should uh, have the repository variable available and our application should work exactly the same. But we have now this very nice App repository view, this could be reused, right? Let's let's say that you wanted to have a dumb component that had a long form and a short form. All of that would work really well with this application. We've improved the change detection because uh, in any of the dumb components, it's very trivial to just say change detection uh, has a change detection strategy of on push, which is going to eliminate these things from the change detection tree whenever that input hasn't changed, which means that I'm gonna have a more performant, better application for my users. So now we've covered both why you'd wanna create a smart and dumb component, how you might do it, and some of the rules to follow that are gonna help you architect and scale your application. See you in the next video.